uh, another Saturday night uh, live stream, Old Smoky Smoke Show, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we got some interesting things here on the table. But I want to start off by just thanking each and every one of you guys. Anybody who stops by, happens to watch even a couple seconds of my content that's here on YouTube, I appreciate you guys. So I just wanted to say thank you, and I really do mean that. I get to know a lot of the people that stop by on these live streams, and that's why I love doing them. It gets really personal. I get to have live conversations with you guys. That doesn't happen if you just post videos, you know what I mean? It's not. It's just not the same. But, again, uh, I like posting videos. I meant to bring my laptop in here. I'll go grab it here in just a few minutes. Uh, I wanted to show you guys a couple things I'm working on. I got a video that's uh, over half done. It should be done, I would say, by Monday, maybe tomorrow, if I get uh, some work done on it tonight, after the live stream, which I may. Um, yeah, I've got, like I said, I've got some interesting stuff here on the table. This came from Gabe Rilla, and I was looking into this right here, the old style salute beer, and uh, wow, <laughs> just this can, this 80th anniversary can. Like, I think an empty one I saw selling for like 10 bucks. I mean, it's hard to tell what that's actually worth sealed. I mean, if there are collectors out there for just about everything, just, you know, just like there are for rations and, and anything else, old bottles, old cans, and uh, if you get them sealed, they're worth more, especially when they're in good condition like this one is. This one's in fantastic condition, a little dent on the bottom. I don't think anybody would care too much about that. And I haven't cleaned this thing up at all, so it's just in good shape. But yeah, I, I just want to start off by saying a huge thank you to each and every one of you guys that watch my content. Especially anybody who's subscribed to my channel and leaves comments on the live streams, on the videos, watches them later. I don't know how to thank you guys enough. Uh, I do have some announcements that I want to make right here. I want to, real quick, I want to make a post about this on uh, on YouTube and see uh, if that helps anybody show up. So, just one second, guys. Take a quick... Whoa. <laughs> Gotta turn the camera around, take a quick picture of what's happening right here, right now. And I've got a package over here from Mrs. Gale that uh, it's going to get open here just first thing. And we're going to get right into this. And then, booger button, booger butt right here. Hopefully they will be here in the chat. I'm going to give them a few minutes to show up while I talk about some things to start with. Then we're going to discuss your guys' thoughts on if you have enough food stashed or just in general to last you if something were to happen. I've been seeing these crazy power outages all over the world. You just, you never know. I mean, anything could literally happen at any moment. So, I've never considered myself to be a prepper. <laughs> uh, that's just not something that has ever really even entered my mind. Am I prepared for a lot of things? I guess so. Uh, but I never set out to be that way, if, if that makes any sense. So, uh... Yeah, let me get it here on YouTube real quick and make a quick post. Create a post. Slap up a photo. So the first thing I want to talk about is if any of you guys were at the live stream for the Ration Museum last week, I hope that I can reach everyone. I will make another post about this tonight probably and definitely tomorrow earlier, probably first thing tomorrow morning. But on the Ration Museum live stream tomorrow between 5.30 and 545 I will be doing a giveaway over there because we did hit 30 last week uh, I got distracted about an hour into the live stream or so 
and uh, I didn't make it back till right at the very end, and it was it was literally ending, and me and Sean got to talking, which the live stream uh, it messed up and ended up running for like five and a half hours. Me and him were on the phone; he was trying to get it stopped. Uh, so little technical difficulties there, but I will be doing that that giveaway tomorrow. The live stream starts at 5 p.m. I'm going to give people time to get there. Hopefully, the same folks that were there last week will show up this week, and anybody who's new who happens to be there will also be eligible. So anybody who's there, and if we don't have 30 folks, that just makes your chances that much better. But anybody who shows up to the Rash Museum live stream tomorrow at 5 o'clock will be They'll, they'll be there. I mean, they'll be there for the, for the giveaway. Me and Sean got it figured out, which I, I knew how I wanted to do it anyways. But just to keep it on the up and up, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to take like a, a little bit of an extra measure. That way, uh, you guys know it's on the up and up. And, uh, I, you know, I can't just pick, I'm not just going to pick somebody. That's not how it's going to work. So you'll see what I'm talking about. And, uh, hopefully... We have a, a, the same folks, and maybe more, show up to this uh, to this upcoming live stream tomorrow. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now, like I was saying, this. Uh, I've got a little bit of a variety of things from different folks on the table. Now, I've got multiple things that I should be talking about. Number one, there's a link right in the top of my description. You can go right now, or if you're re-watching this before, um, before it happens, History Saved Your 1941 is doing a, an amazing giveaway over there on his channel. I want to get as many of you folks entered into that as possible, because the stuff he's giving away, you're... It, you'll be very, very happy if you win that. I I entered to win it. <laughs> if that tells you anything, like I, I typically I try not to enter the giveaways and stuff because uh, it, I don't need anything, but his giveaway is pretty awesome. So go over there, hit that link. All you got to do is make a comment on one of his newer videos. But I, I left a link to the video that he talks about the giveaway. So you guys can go check that out. Um, I see... B Temple here, that reminds me, go check out B Temple, Canadian Trucker, which is CT, and Smitty, my Canadian brethren up there uh, to the north. You guys should subscribe to their channels as well if you like that kind of content, my kind of content, our kind of content. They deserve every subscriber that they can get. So, next thing I got to talk about is uh, art. Over at foreignmre.com, let me uh, pull this mug up right here, right here, right there. Art over at foreignmre.com just informed me, let me pull it up and I'll, I'll tell you guys exactly what he said he's getting in, <clears throat> but you guys should know this. Um, because it's going to correlate to what I'm talking about tonight. It, it, you know, this could be helpful information. And, uh, da, 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 where's he at? Hang on. Sorry, I lost lost his text here. There we go. Okay. Um, he has... He's going to have cases A and B of the United States military MREs with inspection dates of 2022, so that means they're going to be 2019 MREs, which in, in the way of MREs, that's super-duper fresh. Haven't seen very many 2020s yet. The 2020s that I typically do see right right around now and, and have seen, they're overseas. I don't know why they get them sooner than we do overseas, but Art here is going to have a bunch of MREs. He's going to have like a bunch of cases, so he's not going to run out of cases. He's also going to have cases of first strike rations so you guys please go to foreignmre.com and uh, get your military rations that's because art he'll take care of you especially i mean just talk to art 
If you guys are wanting to buy in bulk or something like that, let Art know what you're needing, and I'm sure he'll work with you. So, tell him Old Smokey sent you. That'll that'll really uh, grease his wheels. I think <laughs> that'll that'll make him notice that uh, that you're serious about picking up some rations. So I talked about uh, well, also Minotaur, Minotaur guys. I've got a whole stack of different rations over here that we're going to talk about throughout this. And uh, this is up here as a backup. A Landal actually sent this to me. You guys should go check out a Landal's uh, channel here on YouTube. Subscribe to his channel if you like that. Now, I said Booger Butt and Booger Butt. That is their new name. Uh, whoa, dude. Art, oh my goodness. Thanks for the shout out. Well, Art... You didn't have to do that, man. Art also has like uh, videos that describe what he's got, and you you can see what he has for sale because he shows it in the videos. So you guys go to foreignmre.com's YouTube channel, and you'll actually be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. So, like I said, if you guys need some military rations or something like that, there you go. That's a that's an easy way to get them, and it stays in the community. It's kind of like we're supporting each other, which I, I support that. So, again, uh, Art, dude, seriously, man, you, you really didn't have to do that. Holy cow. Uh, I think it's good to point people in the right directions if I, if I can, if uh, especially if I know the people are good people that, are, that have the supplies. So, yeah, man, <laughs> thank you again for that. That's, uh, wow, holy cow. I'm going to open this package from uh, from Miss Gale. I think we got enough folks in here. And I hope Miss Gale was in here. Is Miss Gale in here? Sound off in the uh, in the chat, Miss Gale, if you're in here. If you're not, I will wait. And I will I will open up this. <laughs> this is uh this is actually a little scary, I ain't gonna lie. But it is what it is. Looking here, but yeah, also like I said, Minotaur guys, you got Minotaur, you got Fornemari.com. Both those ration companies are, I would suggest buying from. At this point in time, I don't, I'm not going to say that my opinion would change, but it, it possibly could. So <laughs> you know, I don't want to lock myself into something and it change in the future. But if it does, I'll let you know. As of right now, though, I would deal with both of those companies. I'm looking to see if uh, Miss Miss Gale is in here. There she is. Hey, all right, good deal. Let's get this package open for Miss Gale. All right, here we go. And it's weird. Like I, I seriously have not been able to keep up with all of my communications lately like i i don't know i'm sure some of you guys understand what having a lot of uh communications and uh messages and stuff like that's like and uh my email is one that i just i, I almost abandoned it but i just happened to see miss gail's email come through the other day and i like i said i haven't been checking it because i haven't had time i've been doing other things and uh I just happened to see it, so there's inside the package. Looks like we have a note in here, so let me grab that. Nope, this is a card, actually. This is cool. I see Merry Christmas. Nope, I thought I seen Merry Christmas on there. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Okay. Hang on. Miss Gail, do you want me to read this aloud, or would you rather me just keep this to myself? Because, uh... I will respect your wishes either way. Hey, what's up, Karsten over there in Germany, my dude? There's some really cool information about this, too, that I, that I actually found. So, hopefully I can get to tell you guys about that. What did I do with my... Oh, Karsten, you're taking off, buddy? Well, thank you for stopping by, man. We appreciate it, dude. It's good to see you made it in here, you know. Did I look that up on here? No, I did not. Huh. 
haven't seen Miss Gale come through in the chat just yet. Anyways, let me just uh, read this off to here to myself for a second. Miss Gale says, this isn't much, but I thought you might enjoy having this four-pack of cigarettes. Uh, at Christmas, I bought three reproduction uh, K-rations from Hogan, which Hogan's been doing them forever. Uh, probably one of the first to start reproducing K-rations that I know of. And, uh, wait, oh, and, and other gear in a canteen, and a mess kit for, for the family. Uh, wanted them to see a bit of history and, and have something, uh, have something, I can't read that because it's overlapped, that might have, uh, uh -huh. that, oh, Wait, that dad might have eaten off of? Might have used during World War II? So, okay. So your dad was in World War II, it looks like. I think that's dad, right? Or is that granddad? I think it's dad. Uh, she said she kept the breakfast one. Uh, out of sheer curiosity for the coffee. I kept the breakfast one. And out of sheer curiosity for the coffee. Now it makes sense why the uh, soldiers lost weight during duty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the meals weren't much. That's for darn sure. Uh, since since the pack is so nice and clean, I hoped it would uh, look good and find a place in your collection. Well, it absolutely will. Uh, this is the closest I will get to seeing what my dad would have had, would have seen, and this I can pass on. That is, well, Gail... I super appreciate it, and it will definitely make its way up onto the shelf. And as soon as I get myself a huge glass display, because I've got so many cool things that I don't have out here, because I just can't, I mean, obviously I can't fit them all. <laughs> Not even close. Didn't start out that way. I mean, uh, started out, I just had a bunch of smokes. Like, that's how I started out. So, let's see what she's talking about here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. These, these look really, really good. Check that out. This is exactly what they would have looked like. Exact size and everything. About, about the same size as my finger. A little bit shorter, actually. Little Lucky Strikes. And they have had the Lucky Strikes Mean Spine Tobacco for a long time. I don't know when they started that. I think it was... I want to say it was in the late 20s, but it could have been earlier than that even. It might have been even World War I when they were still using that slogan. They still use it to this day. It The craziest thing, because I just got this uh, brochure, coupon brochure thing, I guess you would call it, in the mail yesterday or day before. And it has this really cool gold sticker on it that, that has... Uh, Wait, what's it have on it? It has Lucky Strike. Uh, oh, M means fine tobacco. M-S, wait a minute, M-F-T, or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it has on it, but it's got this really cool gold sticker that I want to try to get off there because it's, like the, it's like a gold seal, and it says Lucky Strike on it. It's really cool. And these are in here, I do believe. They are. <laughs> so I wonder if he actually, oh, he used, he used Paul Malls. Cool. I might even have to smoke one of them <laughs> just to see, just to see how old, what old Hogan's using in there. That is cool, man. Well, thank you, Miss Gale. I super appreciate that. And I actually have right here. Hang on, one of the most pristine packs of Raleigh's from a K ration that I've ever seen. And these are actually, it's not a hard cardboard pack, which some of them were, a lot of them actually, but this is actually a paper-wrapped pack of Raleigh's. And these are legit. And they smell so good. <sighs> I wish I could share that smell with you guys.
right out of Louisville, Kentucky. Most tobacco came around come from Kentucky from Kentucky. This is a blended a blended Turkish and domestic tobaccos. So kind of spin off of a camel being the Turkish blend, but uh, there's a pack of Raleigh's from probably 43, I think. Might even be from 40. Might even be from 42 actually. These are these are early. You didn't see a bunch of Raleigh's. It's a very uncommon pack to find. Hey, Gabe is here. What's up, Gabe? Yes, LSMFT. That's very hard to say. Uh, really? I could have sworn it came in before that. Well, thank you for that information because I thought that it, they started that slogan earlier than that. <clears throat> because I know they must have started it around the same time that they started marketing directly towards women. They really were targeting women because, I mean, they, honestly, they made up the majority of the population in America because uh, a lot of the guys were, were shipped off. So, yeah, I'm going to leave these probably wrapped up. Like, actually, I'm just going to put them off to the side for right now. I have a pack of palm oils to open up, too. I don't know which, which one I'll do. Grew some tobacco last summer just to see if you could. <laughs> and how did it turn out? Okay. Well, thank you, Miss Gail. I'll put that note with the rest of my notes. And I missed a note from Booger Butt and Booger Butt. Uh, whenever I got <clears throat> got the package from them, somehow I missed this note. Uh, he said, Smokey, my son and I enjoy watching your channel. We got this MRE in a deal, so I figured you might like to use it in one of your, your live streams, your videos. Also, uh, what a better way, way to wash it down than a 50-year-old root beer. Have fun. And, uh, oh yeah, Flat Top Dave and LJ. That's right. Okay. I think that I have talked enough to talk your guys' ears off. So I'm going to, I'm going to ruin my palate, I think. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to start off with, uh, oh, cool, you're playing World War II, <laughs> Call of Duty World War II. I've got a really cool Call of Duty World War II kit right here underneath my table that came with the canteen and like a little, uh, a little backpack, kind of rucksack looking backpack. What else was in that thing? Something else food related was in there. I can't remember. But the canteen was a uh, was it metal? I don't I don't think so. I think it was a plastic canteen is why I never really did anything with it. I actually have a spare one of those kits that I really should build a little kit with here on uh, on the live stream someday and give it away or something. Do something like that with it. Oh, all right. Well, I guess I've been stalling enough. I just uh, I just lit a camel from 1988 or 89. I can't remember which, but it's a it's a camel light right here. I took the camel bucks off of it when I opened it, but uh, yeah. Can't tell what that says anymore. Can't remember where I got these at. I uh, had them for years. Hey, what's up, Smitty? I see Smitty. Been watching some Letterkenny um, clips here lately. And this right here was graciously given to me by Blindside. Sure, I'm not gonna be able to get that unstuck without leaving it behind on the jar. So, uh, me and this stuff here, <laughs> we almost share a name in common. Although this is not old Smokey, this is old Smokey. A lot of people say my name that way, but uh, I'm actually old, O L D. 
Old Smokey. And this is Old Smokey. Alright, well, I guess I could technically probably peel that all the way off, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to fold it up like that. And give you guys a good look at this, <clears throat> because this is... <clears throat> This is Old Smoky, Tennessee Moonshine, and it's all jalapenos. Freaking jalapenos. Is there a Best Buy? I'm sure there's no Best Buy date on this, right? I don't know. It's got food in it, so maybe. Do they put a date on this to when you should use it by? Corn, natural flavors, and artificial color. Really? Why artificial color? It's clear. Gatlinburg oldsmoky.com yeah if you google me either this will pop up or these uh these smokers alright I'm gonna have to there we go well it didn't pop or anything woohoo yeah. Look at that. So that smells like um, some fairly potent jalapenos. It's making my mouth water. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, whew, okay, so I need a fork. And I will actually use my, this is from foreignmre.com right here. Yeah. Right there, too. Foreignmre.com. Same folks I was talking about earlier having some, uh, whole bunch of 2022 inspection date MREs. It's titanium. Camping eating utensil. All right, we're just gonna, <clears throat> we're just gonna, I guess, do this. It's almost like an end piece right there. There's plenty of seeds in there. It's almost an end piece. I guess go big or go home, right? Going to flip the camera for you guys. There it is. This is going to be rough, I'm going to tell you. What are you doing to me, blindside? I mean, they smell good. Typically, though, when I bite into like a cut jalapeno like this, I want it to be, I want it to have like a sour note to it. Um, Maybe even slightly salty, so kind of, uh, typically I like them where they've been in some brine or something. And I don't think, uh, I don't think that moonshine's going to do that for these, but. <sighs> My tongue's already been weird, so. Looking up, like, th my, my camera's lower than I am. People on social media tell me that this is not a flattering thing. I'm a flattering angle. I don't care. Just shut up and eat it, right? Just, just, ah, just eat it. Alright. It's just a jalapeno, right? Just a jalapeno with, like, probably 150, 160... I don't even know what proof it is. Am I going to have to take a drink of it too? Probably. Alright, here we go. Um, I should have had something to drink. Oh. 
Uh, made my mouth go numb immediately. <clears throat> I let that whole cigarette burn up. Oh, nope. That's just really hot. <sighs> Why did I do that again? Oof. <sighs> <clears throat> That's an interesting uh, combination of flavors. Hey, Tracy's here. How you doing, Tracy? <clears throat> focus yeah the uh, the numbing effect is real it has like this strange paint thinner follow up I don't even know how to I don't, I don't know how else to describe that and my entire tongue is numb it's hot it, it's way hotter than a jalapeno should be, I would say. I'd say it's at least two to three times hotter than uh, any jalapeno I've ever had. And I'm going to guess that's probably the heat from the, the moonshine itself. Really? It's only 40? Okay, so that would be... That'd only be 20%, right? Uh, thanks for the super chat, Blindside. I think I missed one, actually. You just reminded me. Uh... Trying to cook your guts out. <laughs> well, I think uh, this might do it, actually. Alright, I'm going to have to... Um, what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to... Yeah, alright. So I'm going to eat one and, 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 and take a sip. Um, I want to inspect and see. Here, I'll turn, I'll turn the camera back around for a minute. Just real quick, I want to see what proof this is. Does it say on here? It does not. I just don't want to spill it, so. This is a commemorative jar. It's actually. It says it's commemorative. Get the old smoky in there. How did I not look and see? Contains alcohol. Contains alcohol. Okay. Right here. Whoa, no. <laughs> it's 100 proof. 50% alcohol. <laughs> uh, a little higher than uh, than 40. <laughs> 40 proof. So, uh, more than double that, actually. I, I tell you guys, I bet you... I, honestly, I'm going to use these on probably some pizza. I, I don't know if cooking them will... I don't shouldn't cook the alcohol because when you make moonshine you're cooking it you know I don't know why I want to eat this one right here and it's not just because it's small it's because it has it looks like the kind of pepper texture that I'd like kind of similar to what the outside rim is and what a banana pepper is kind of so I guess I'll just double up here to make it fair Um, oh, just knocked it off of there. Like a goofball. There's no way to start, huh? I'm being slow. I'm sorry, guys. I'll try to try to hurry it up. Um, and I'm going to be honest. I'm not a huge fan of uh, of moonshine. Um, I've had plenty of opportunities and plenty of plenty of it in front of me. I've had it phew, more times than I can count. Uh, and, and I'm talking like not a brand, <laughs> not a brand of just, you know, somebody made it. Uh, I've had really, really, really awful stuff. I've had stuff that is fairly smooth. I've had stuff that had no flavor. I've had stuff that tastes like gasoline. I've had stuff that tastes like rubbing alcohol. It's, uh, you know, th there's, a, there's a wide variety. <laughs> it just depends on who made it, what they made it out of, how, you know, how they made it. 
all that good stuff. So my tongue is so numb that I'm biting it. That is a bad side effect because that's all I'm doing. Every time I say a word, my tongue is like, it must be swollen because I'm biting it on both sides. And, uh, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> okay. Real quick. Let's get her done. Let's just get her done. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to screw around here. All right. But I guess I'm going to wash these down with it. How good of an idea is that? Probably not very. Oh. 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 Oh, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can drink it. Ugh. Ugh. <coughs> I can't suck it out of my mustache. Ugh. Oh. Ah. <coughs> oh my goodness. What in the world? So it's, uh, I mean, it's hot, but it's hot in a weird way because it kind of, what the alcohol does <clears throat> to my tongue. I don't know if it do it to everybody's tongue, but it's doing it to mine. It's like it's raw and it just makes it hotter because of that. And I, I, I don't, I, I don't think I'm allergic to it or anything, but. Now my lips are stinging, almost like I got stung by a bee. Hmm. Interesting. Whew, I'm breathing fire. I will tell you that. My goodness. Um, I can feel it in my eyes. You know, if you I, if you've ever eaten anything really hot really hot peppers or anything like that like I'm sweating and I can feel it's like when it starts to c come out of your pores it comes out of your face because it's it's already there I guess I don't know but you can almost feel it coming out of your eyes that's where I'm at <clears throat> okay mm-hmm Horny Animal says, looks like you're having fun with that. Define fun. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for the uh, for the super chat. I appreciate that, uh, Horny Animal. What am I doing? Um, flipping the camera around, that's what I was doing. Maybe. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. Interesting uh, experience right here. I I I have to eat more of these with with food. Like on uh, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe maybe tonight. Maybe. I wonder just how buzzed you get from eating a handful of them. I mean, hundred proof is, is up there. Fifty percent. I mean, that's that's half half by volume of it is pure alcohol. I mean, there can't be that much alcohol in there. That's like plum full of peppers. I've seen the blueberries, the cherries. Oh, I think they even do a strawberry one. I'm not sure. I know I've seen the oh, the blueberry and the cherry before. I had the cherry. It was awful. 
absolutely awful. It might even still be in there in the bottom drawer of my refrigerator, like tucked way back in the back, hidden underneath like a pack of cheese or something. I don't know what I did with that stuff, but it was awful. Oh, goodness gracious. Next up on the list. Um, yeah, just gonna, just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. Wish I could open this one from the bottom. Because this is such a cool can. The G. Heilman Brewing Company. This one I can put down the hatch pretty quick. Uh, did you guys know? This is an interesting little fact for you guys. In baseball, every baseball field is different. There is no set regulation for where the outfield ends, where the home run line is. There's no set number for that. Did you guys know that? Is that not the strangest thing? Look at this. Like, Which, I mean, okay, it differs from one side to the other. But left field, it's 355 feet. Center field, it's 400 feet. And right field, it's 353. And I was... I can't remember what I was looking at the stats on the, these the other day. I think it was Boston's got a really long home run area i think or something I, maybe in new york's was short but it's crazy the differences between home run um distances at different stadiums i didn't know that i just kind of assumed that it was regulated but now thinking back about it and thinking about like playing all throughout school and then my kids playing and me coaching like home runs are different everywhere you go they're, they're never the same the infield is regulated you know from home to first and first to second second to third third to home and where the pitcher is that's all regulated but once you get past the infield it's that's it you can do whatever like it's crazy so this is a 80th anniversary commemoration of wrigley field home of the chicago cubs and good old harry carey Harry Carey would have would have been. Uh, I think he'd have been announcing when this was. This is ninety seven, I think, right? I saw it on here before. Uh, is it ninety seven or oh seven? Something like that. Oh, hey, there's a super chat. Dub C, hey old Smokey, hope you're doing well. Uh, that is a pretty cool can. I agree. Thank you for the super chat, Dub C. Been watching a lot of Dub C's videos too lately. Here, guys, you guys got to get. He's putting a lot of work into his videos and his channel so he definitely deserves you to go over there and subscribe to his channel let me oh here 94 okay 1994 so how old is this beer 94 somebody want to do the math real quick i'm already getting a little bit um 94 04 14 uh 26 20 27 years old 27 year old kids so we'll call it 26 i'm sure it's not 27 yet because uh this is probably an exact date isn't it? Nope, just says 37. Uh, the famous Wrigley Field scoreboard was constructed in 1937. Uh, no batted baseball has ever hit... No batted baseball has ever hit it. I Wow, that was up to 1994. I wonder if that has changed since 1994. Huh, interesting. I had no idea. I hate to open this thing from the top, but I don't think I can open it from the bottom. Let's just let's just see if I'm there's nothing for that to grab a hold of there. But I think I could probably poke a hole in the bottom of this and then drink it from there. Let's find out. Hang on, let me put something underneath this real quick. If I can. What do I have here? I gotta have something. Uh, here we go. That'll work. All right, let's do this. Maybe. It's spraying out. Oh, it's spraying out. Why did it 
do that. Woo wee! I gotta drink it. I gotta drink that off of there. <coughs> what is going on here? It's like a volcano. What in the heck? Alright, I'm gonna have to drink that off of there too. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm confused about what's going on here. It's just uh, it it, it ain't stopping. I think it needs another hole. <clears throat> I'm covered in it. Okay, we're going to get this one done with the quickness. I'm going to flip the camera around and uh, pick it up, and hopefully down the hatch it goes. Oh. 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 Woo. <clears throat> oh, Heilman's old style tall boy. 16 ounces. This is a pint. I got to poke this hole bigger. Hang on. something I can actually uh, get some liquid out of okay it's really bitter really bitter I don't know if that's an after effect of the the jalapenos or not though hit my stomach like a ton of bricks <laughs> it tastes awful it tastes like <clears throat> what does that taste like it almost tastes like uh, like kind of like melted crowns would smell and Almost like a latex paint mixed with a melted crayons type of smell. It's it's got a very chemical taste to it. It just smells like old fart beer. <laughs> it's it's got a it's got a real fart smell to it. Very pungent. Oh, that almost came back. It's not that I can't, I can't handle the drinking it. It's the, it's, it's, it's what it's doing when it hits my stomach. It's like, I don't even know how to describe that feeling. Like I, I can, you know, like the mouthwash commercials when they dump the mouthwash into a cup or into a, a beaker or something and you can see it like, that's what I can feel it doing, hitting my stomach, and it's like, and it just swirls, and it's really weird feeling. I'm down to about that much, though, so I'm not going to let this one beat me. It's, it's, it's trying. God, it's so bitter. Oh.
Oh, God. <laughs> oh, there's the chunks. Oh. Well, that's it. Oh. Oh. All right, let's eat some old food. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Good old, old style. Oh, my. Oh. Oh, excuse me, guys. I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh. Time out for a second. Okay. Whew. Yep, I had to fight that one for a second. Still ended up messing my table all up, even though I put the napkin or whatever down. Alright, what do we have here? We have a, uh, a fawn. I might have the drink next time, because I've had, like, now I've got a lot of liquid on my stomach, so, and, uh, there's some cool information about that fawn that I'd like to like to get out there. Where's my little razor knife at? There it is. Okay. Now, today, as I'm having this or trying this food, this may this may be edible, it may not. Um, booger butt and booger butt. Said it, uh, they don't know anything at all about the storage conditions, uh, anything about this rations past, like they mentioned in the letter. They just got a deal on it. Okay, Miss Marilyn, sorry. Got a super chat. Let me check it here. Go to my super chats. It's not giving them to me for some reason. Okay, let's see. Blindside says, uh, probably fight with the moonshine. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're not agreeing with each other or something. It's very odd. I got a very odd feeling going on in my stomach right now. It's, uh, I literally had to take a break there and just kind of fight to keep it down, which I usually don't have to do. I usually don't have any troubles. Now that, that one that I had last week, I can't remember what brand it was and I don't have the can handy right here, but it was one that had been open and had been open for a long time was oxygen damaged. That's the first time I've ever tried to drink something like that, and it, like, literally was making me gag, and, and I was going to puke. If I'd have tried to drink that thing any further than what I did, I would have 100% puked, and I, I'm not prepared to puke. Like, I'm not a puker. I don't have a puke bucket. I don't I don't stand in a little mini pool like some of these YouTubers do uh, that just expect themselves to puke because they're doing something gross. Um, I... Whatever I do, I plan on uh, eating and keeping down. Now, I'm not a crazy, magnificent uh, eating live squid and stuff like that, because I've seen people do that, which actually grosses me out. I think squids are super intelligent, from what I understand. And to eat them things alive on camera like that, I think it's just it's just horrible. Eat them alive, period. I just, anyways, I mean, still their food. They're going to get cooked. They're going to get killed. They're going to get whatever. It is what it is. I just think that's like taking it beyond but uh anyways this ration right here has to be above 1986 87 above 87 right let's see 85 first gen 86 87 has to be 80 88 or up so this has to, because they didn't start putting these big numbers on here until 1988 i believe you have to get, Go back and double check my MRE video. It's been a while since uh, I've worried about it. I'm pretty sure I'm right, though. <laughs> could be wrong. I'm not going to say I'm 100% right on that. But this could be anywhere from 1988 all the way up to uh, 1995. This menu right here stayed the same all throughout. Menu number 11, chicken and rice. One of, this is in my top five. Menus, top five. Chicken and rice, very plain, basic, simple menu, but 
it's really good. I mean, it's just, it's simple, but it's good, you know? All right, let's cut this bad boy open and see what we got in here. Hopefully, uh, Booger Button, Booger Butt's still here. Because I did see them in the chat. Oh. 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 Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I apologize for the... I can't stop it. Oh. 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 Okay. Moving on. Okay, so I, first thing I see is M&M's. This is newer. I don't know how much newer, but this is definitely not going to be an 88, an 89. It's not going to be an 88 or 89. This could be 90 to 95. This is what I'm calling just from seeing the M&M's. You can see I've seen no dates, but that's what I'm thinking. Let's check the M&M's. Oh, they feel good, actually. They don't feel busted up. Just a tiny bit of candy crumbs in there, which is typical. There is a weird, a very strange discoloration happening right here. For, oh, no, there's not. That's just, it's just see-through. Those are yellow M&Ms on the inside. Huh. What? No, I'm wrong. Never mind. What is that? Maybe I'm not wrong. I'm not really sure. You guys see that? I can't move it. Never mind. Looks like rust, almost. I'm sure I could find a day. Okay, look. There's a four. These are probably going to be 1994. Let's find out. Let's keep going. Let's find out. Let me get this out of the way. Let me get this out of the way. Maybe. Um, I'm going to be sending out some packages here soon, guys. Would any of you guys be interested in any of the uh, empty cans that I have? Because I can't keep them all. I really can't. Uh, I'm going to send out probably one in uh, the next Patreon box that I send out. So if you guys want to support me over on Patreon, buck a month. And uh, I send packages to everybody who does Patreon at one point in time or another. If you do like the dollar, uh, I will at least send you a P38 at some point. Um, no guarantees on when or how I will do that, but I will do it. <clears throat> Alright, let's find out a date on this bad boy. There's another 4. This has got to be a 94. It's Red Taster's Choice. We have... Is that Steve's favorite... Uh, Nope, it is not Steve's favorite wet wipe in there. Those are only from 91 and 92, I think. Maybe 1990, 91, or 92. We do have our brown, partially biodegradable MRE spoon. So we have a 1994 chicken and rice here. So it's on the newer side. That's a good thing. Ooh, this is one with cheese bread. Oh, okay. But I'll tell you what. This cheese bread actually doesn't feel too bad. I can't tell you it's going to be good just because of the way it feels, but it's usually a pretty good indication on just how it's going to turn out. And this, nice and pliable, it feels it feels like peanut butter in there, which is a, a really good... Uh, it's a good sign. Oh. Excuse me. Goodness gracious. I cannot hold those back. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying not to. I don't want to burp. Make you guys hear that. Whew. And I don't really want to taste it either, to be honest. It, it tastes pretty, uh, pretty, you know, like, like a fart. <laughs> kind of tastes like a fart. Jalapeno fart. 326 days. We're almost looking at 1995 here. 365 days in the year. So what are we? 40. Nope, 39 days off at the end of the year, so uh, not quite, a little over a month there, a month and, uh, month and uh, a little over a week, because there's 31 days in that last month. It's a good looking pack of crackers right there, I'll tell you that, look at that, 
perfection. They knew they knew what they were doing back then, man. I'm telling you, like the stuff nowadays just doesn't hold up as well. What am I doing? All right, let's get get it together, bud. We got to go through that accessory packet still. All right, let's see what else is in here. What do we have here? Uh, beverage base powder, orange, 145th day. So, uh, kind of the question that I had in the thumbnail is, uh, do you have enough food? Do you have enough long-term storage food? Is your food that you've had, if you have long-term storage food, is it still good? Have you checked it? Is that is that something that you uh, even think about? Not everybody does. Uh, it's not something I ever really thought about. I mean, it's just it's just something I, like I have I have food. You know, I have old old food. Okay, so this is like one of the coveted holy grails of MRE uh, in the MRE community. This is what uh, is sometimes referred to as a Reagan cookie. Now, the Reagan cookies are actually the round ones, but I call these Reagan cookies too. Uh, this is a chocolate covered, well, it says oatmeal cookie chocolate covered. These things are virtually indestructible they hold up so well and this one right here is i mean just judging by the packaging i gotta say booger butt and booger butt i was judging this thing by by the outside of the package i was like this thing's gonna be toast but now that i open it up like look at that that is a beautiful sight they don't always look like this. That thing, that's a very good example right there. Oh, right here's a, this is a, this is a big, big deal right here. This is the second year for this right here to be in their actual MRE, in the ration. Second year for the flameless ration heater. This one's actually in pretty decent shape too. I don't see, uh, I don't see a bunch of loose filings in there. Which that's what those are. It's kind of uh, magnesium iron filings that are in there. And look how long the old ones were. Like they are super, super long. That thing is every bit of, I don't know, I would say that thing's close to a foot and a half with this extra little flap at the top here. And if I cut that just right below, I cut it right there. I mean, that's a lot. You could stick one pouch down in there and another one up here and fold it over on itself and have one in the top and one flat against it on the, you know, right up next to it. And this thing would be long enough to do both. That's uh, pretty impressive. And if you guys want, I'll try this thing out. I'll, I'll throw some salt water in this bad boy this time and uh, we'll, we'll see if it'll cook off. Alright, what else we got here? We have our main chicken and rice looking good at one point it was inspected <laughs> for wholesomeness by the u.s department of agriculture the usda at one point they uh, they said that this was was good enough to put inside a military ration oh look at that look at that folks I'll tell you what, if it wouldn't be too late when this live stream finished up, I would go play the lottery. Watch. Boom! <laughs> I have never, not once, I've never seen anybody get two bottles. I've never gotten two bottles. I Okay, so one's empty. <laughs> of course it is. That's funny. <laughs> Uh, and the other one is, uh, full? I think it's full. Yeah, it's full. That's great. That is super great. Look at that. <laughs> man, I get a kick out of that. That's great, man. So, I'll clean that up and have a sealed, empty bottle of Tabasco. It won't be, uh, completely clean on the inside, but clean enough. I mean... It's like it almost looks like it's got a. Let me see if I can focus on that. 
Hang on. It looks like it's got an air an air bubble inside of it. It's really weird. Stop losing focus. Looks like there's an air bubble right here. Very odd. Almost like, you know, like a dish soap bubble or something. But this one's this one's full. Oh, excuse me. This right here. Nope. This right here is current fresh Tabasco that I put in the bottle. This is the old Tabasco right here. A little bit of change in, in, in shade, but not a whole lot. So this is looking pretty good. You know, that's a very good indication of what kind of condition your vintage MRE is going to be in. And uh, when, you're, when you're going into it blind like this, like I am right now, uh, you don't know. You don't really know. So you got to look for signs of what type of condition it's going to be in, like your M&Ms. Listening to those, there's a little bit of uh, loose candy pieces in there, which isn't ideal, but uh, it's, it's pretty typical. I mean, this thing, judging by the bag, it's had some rough handling throughout its life. You know, this thing was definitely outside of the case for a couple years, probably at least, or longer. So it got handled, and uh, that's why the M&Ms are a little bit loose like they are. Then I hope I didn't forget to talk about anything tonight. Uh, don't forget tomorrow, guys, the live stream. If you were there last week, we, we hit the 30. We didn't go over it, but we hit the 30. Doing a giveaway tomorrow on the Ration Museum live stream. I will make a post tonight about it, and I will make a post in the morning or some, you know, early tomorrow about the giveaway. It's going to be from 5:30 to 5:45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over on the Ration Museum's channel. Mm -hmm. Don't miss it. Anybody who's there will be eligible for the giveaway. Okay, let's see what we got in the uh, accessory pack. I almost forgot to open it and look at it. We got our matches that are red tip. They're black matches with red tips. On camera, they look purple down here, and they do have a slight purple hue to them. And, of course, these are made by the trusty D.D. Bean and Sons. Strike on back. We have a box of chiclets, which I kind of thought they stopped doing before 1994, but I guess I was wrong. And these are peppermint. Nice little pack of chiclets. Here we have a pack of Taster's Choice, which is definitely not going to be any good. We'll take a look at it. I mean, it could be fooling me, but I don't think so. I don't think it's any good, unfortunately. We have a pack of cream substitute dry non dairy. We got creamer. Got a pack of Domino sugar. Can't believe we got two Tabasco bottles. Four gram pack of iodized salt. A refreshing towelette, moist towelette, made by Clinipad. We'll check that out and see if it's still moist. And last but Definitely not least, you got your U.S. issued butt ration or toilet paper or napkins, paper towels, whatever you choose to use them for is what they are. Um, I would save them up for my butt ration probably because uh, if I was in the field and in the military, I would not have a big old beard and mustache like I do right now, most likely. Now, I, I take that back. I mean, I'd probably be a want to be uh I, I'd, I'd probably be one of the guys had a beard <clears throat> all right so uh what am i going to do first i'm going to go boil this i don't see any delamination, no delamination at all on any of these retort pouches or trilaminate pouches this even feels this is perfect I have a feeling this is going to be in spectacular shape. The only reason I had this out 
was as a backup for uh, for food. And uh, these are what Art's going to have over there. He, I'm sure he has some right now, but he's getting more. What he's got for sale over there on 4nmre.com. All right, guys, I'll be right back. I'm going to go heat this up. Nothing else I need to heat up, is there? Nope. Okay. Be right back. Okay, got the chicken and rice going. Let's see what else we got going on here. It's good stuff, guys. Burger button, burger button. I think uh, I think you sent me a good one. I honestly didn't have very high hopes for it, but once I got into it and got to looking at it, see that's one thing about the old MREs. You just never know. You never know until you get into them and get to looking at them, and uh, you know, really start digging into the food i mean i've got a pretty good idea by just looking at the packaging but i'm not really going to know until we really get into the food now let me see if i have my yeah i do all right and i think i got enough here i got a little bit of salt water here on standby let's see Sorry guys. I know I washed this thing, but uh I guess I could get my other tray. I have it handy here. Where is my other tray? Weird. Oh, there it is. Let's get it. Yeah, why not? Ugh. Give this one a break for a while. Cool. What just happened? I think I just knocked out my light. I did. Son of a gun. Well, guys, we are going to be without some light. I don't think you guys can tell too much, but uh, I can. <sighs> oh, well. Is what it is. Get a new light bulb for that. Let's see if this flameless ration heater will work. Just curious. Let's find out. And then I want to talk to you guys in the chat and in general about your personal thoughts on uh, whether or not you have enough food, what types of things you, you think you should go get. For your food. Uh, did I not cut that open? <laughs> May not have. Huh. Need to go lower, I guess. I'll be daggone. Well. Let's put some water in this bad boy. I don't want to leave that chicken and rice in there very long. So. I gotta go get it here in just a minute as soon as I get this flameless ration heater going okay. there we go it's about right right in between the two lines now let's see we want it to face up this way Take a 
bottle of water. Sit down on it right there for now. See if that thing uh, heats up and takes off. I don't know. You know, you just never know with those. I think, well, I know by using salt water, we're giving it the best possible chance of heating up. But uh, I've had them not work with salt water before. Typically, they do work, though. All right, I'm going to go. Should I go grab that already? I'd say I probably should. Done the whole tray switching and. All right, let me go grab the uh, chicken and rice real quick. Looks like that thing's swollen up a little bit there. Alright. There's our main. I can't believe my light went out on me. Oh well. Again, guys, don't miss the uh, Ration Museum live stream tomorrow. I'm going to do the giveaway between 5.30 and 5.45. Anybody who was there last week, you're definitely going to want to show up. And uh, anybody new, also, you're also going to be if you're there, you're eligible. That's how it's going to work. If there's five people there, if there's 500 there. And uh, if there's 500 there, I'll be doing three giveaways. If there's 40 there, I'll be doing two giveaways. If there's 50 there, I'll be doing three giveaways. Okay. Let's... Let's see if the coffee... I don't think it's going to be any good. But can't guarantee it. I really can't tell 100% by feeling it. Oh yeah, I figured much. Oh, that's really furry. Look at that. Straight up moldy coffee. Good old red taster's choice. I don't... They must have packaged this stuff with a high moisture content or something for it to be so consistently gone bad over time. And I'll bet you this stuff, the Red Taster's Choice, went bad even when it was fairly new. So, we will do my Nest Cafe right here that a kayfabe sent. Sent me, I'll use this little tiny, uh, I think it's, I can't remember what this spins out of. I think it's out of a, uh, what is this spoon out of? Oh, an SRG. Polish. My buddy Delicious, man. You guys, I don't know if you guys know who Delicious is, but if you do not, look up Delicious here on YouTube. Delicious MRE review. Type that in. That'll get you to his page. And, uh, he's such a good guy. He really is. I've had very good uh, conversations with him, very good luck with him over the years. He's helped me out numerous times. Two or three times I've done dealings with him, maybe a little more, maybe three or four. Yep, couldn't hold on to that. But yeah, I would recommend checking him out. Super nice guy. Go over there, talk to him in his comments. He'll answer you back. Really nice guy. Tell him old Smokey sent you over there. You like what he does subscribe to his channel of course anybody i suggest i think uh they all deserve a subscribe they all get a subscribe from me for sure that doesn't mean you'll like it if you if you like it though 
hit that sub button for them. And uh, if you guys like this type of stuff, hit the thumbs up. Or if you don't, go ahead and hit that thumbs down. I'm, I'm fine with it either way. It's your decision. I'm not pressuring you either way. But uh, Google does like to hear from you. And uh, I like to give Google what they want. <laughs> I'm, I'm lying. I really despise it. But at the same time, got to play the game. So, their game. You can't get nowhere. Now, I will grab my laptop because I wanted to kind of pick your guys' brain a little bit about... I had to... Because I'm using a different laptop than I've used my entire YouTube career or whatever. And uh, so I had to get new music. Oops. And I was just curious if uh, you guys wanted to give me some advice on the music choices that I've made. And I'll show you guys parts of the video where I have the music added in. Nose is a little bit runny. We got an orange beverage base here. Let's get out the uh... let's get the Gremlins Cup. This takes twelve foot ounces, right? Yep, twelve ounces. What's the, oh, wow. That's looking really good, actually. Uh, it's got a weird smell to it. Whoa. Really weird smell to it. Oh, wow. Check this out, guys. Look at that. Holy crap. That thing has popped off. Hold on. We're going to take advantage of this. And, uh, man, holy crap, that is hot. Ah. Ow, hot, 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 hot. Ow, hot, hot, ow, hot, hot. Whew. Son of a gun. Look at that. Can you guys see how much steam's rolling off of that flameless ration heater from 1994? But that's not always the case. I mean, typically, if you use salt water like I just used, like super, super thick concentrated salt water which is what i i have mixed up i mean it's very concentrated salt water it the flameless ration heaters will at least somewhat work but that one right there that one right there is full-blown working okay this is the oddest smelling whoa that smells like that smells like something in the hospital, like a antiseptic, um, some kind of medicine or something. It's very odd smelling. Almost has like an industrial, like grease or oil type smell to it. <laughs> I don't get it. There it is. I mean, it looks good. It just smells so weird. That's honestly one of the oddest, if not the oddest, smelling orange drinks that I've ever smelled. i got to try a little bit in my hand just to see what is going on here. I'll try it out. Hmm. Okay. So it tastes really weird, too very sour not as sweet as I would have thought it should be and it has that weird chemical flavor to it I don't know what's going on with this one <laughs> just being honest not real sure uh, looking okay in the water I guess it's a little bit light in color Tip typically it's a little darker orange than that but uh, I'm okay with it but I know how these these old drinks are supposed to look, and this one's 
a little bit light in color, I would say, and I added less water than it's supposed to have. 12 ounces would be this cup brimful. So there's like nine, nine and a half in there probably. I'm sure it's fine, I'm sure it's fine. I can't believe how well that flameless ration heater uh, took off. Very impressed by that. Let's see what else we got here. We got our good old MRE crackers. Let's get them bad boys popped open. Just heard a nice little hiss there. Look at that. Virtual perfection. Out of some crackers. 1994. Very good. And look at that last. Save the best for last, huh? Now, typically, I save the M and M's to just give away because I mean, if I have a double of that year, which I do, I have more than more than two of the 1994s. I would give this package away. So, what do you guys think? Do you think I should keep this pack to give away, or do you think I should open it right now? Up to you guys. Smokey, I've always wondered, uh, could hot hands be used as an FRH? Uh, no. I would say no. Unless you're okay with your food being extremely lukewarm. <laughs> hot hands just doesn't get hot enough. And, uh, you can't, you can't add water to hot hands because it, it'll just kill it. So, uh, Maryland says to open. Maryland says, oh, uh, oh, I get two opens and one giveaway from, from Art. Seen. I've seen two opens and one giveaway, so just what I glanced down and saw, the opens win it. I mean, honestly, 1994 pack of M&M's is, is pretty collectible, to be honest. And this pack of M&M's is probably worth 10 bucks if you were to list them on eBay. I'm sure you could get that out of them all day long. So whatever that staining is right there, I guess is on the outside, and I have no idea what that came from. I, I no, no idea. There's your look inside. They're looking pretty daggone good. Gotta say. Yeah, that that's that's impressive. Those are looking fantastic. We got some nice little lump of green right. It's actually a circle of green right there. Yellow, brown, orange, red, and green. Two shades of brown, I guess I should say. So you got two different browns. Yellow, red, orange, and green. You know, I can't resist it. I've got to have one. What's going on with this one? This looks like one of the only broken ones. I mean, I don't even really see any cracked ones or anything. Take a look at those. They're looking absolutely fantastic. Typically, you'll see like uh, some stress fractures in them from them sw the chocolate, the cocoa swelling over time. Just even a little bit of heat exposure will get these things to swell up enough to crack the candy coating on the outside. These, that's not happened with. Can't believe it. Here we go. Down the hatch. Wow. Those are absolutely perfect. I'll be honest, typically whenever you eat the older M&Ms from, you know, the 90s, they'll have just a little bit of a uh, a little bit of something <laughs> to the flavor that's not normal. You know, it's just age. I don't know if it's from the packaging. I guess it's really not. It's from the storage conditions. I mean, I guess it is from the packaging, the storage conditions, all mixed together. This thing had to be stored quite well. I must say. Quite impressed. Quite impressed. I mean, this thing is beautiful. 
this almost deserves to give someone just because of how nice it is. Very nice. I don't feel like I'm worthy of this. If that makes any sense. See you later, Pete. Thanks every every single one of you guys stop by to watch content. Man, I appreciate each and every one of your guys' views. Every time you guys watch a little bit, make a comment. Or I make a fool of myself and drop a knife, tw knife twice while trying to open a cookie. But I really do appreciate you guys. My cat is scratching at the window right now, currently. Close this knife before I cut myself, because those things are insanely sharp. It came from Bob. Minotaur. Look at that. <laughs> Let me scoop it up here on the... Uh... Look at this thing. got like a mirror finish to it I mean, these things are s this uh, so spectacular this side's a little better I mean right there and right there a little bit it's just where it was kind of stuck to the inside packaging even though it was vacuum sealed like look at that right there look at that Let's want to slide off there. I mean, that's like visual ASMR right there. It's so satisfying to look at. Definitely a beautiful cookie. <laughs> I gotta say, a beautiful cookie. Set the imminent pack there. It's nice for aesthetics. Okay. Give this one more really good need. While I'm doing that, I can go let my cat in real quick. She is not going to go away until I do. Well, I don't want her to go away. But... Come on, Minnie. Come on, Minnie. Minnie. All right. Sorry about that, guys. My apologies. My apologies. Cut this bad boy open. This should be perfectly kneaded up. I think this might be edible. Oh. Judging by everything else and how this felt when I first opened it and uh, started kneading on it, felt perfect. Like I said, it felt like peanut butter. That's what you want with a cheese spread. You don't want it to be real hard or hard to knead in particular. I mean, this flameless ration heater right here, guys, is so hot. It it could have heated this main easily. It is so hot. I can't even touch the outside of the box. Can't hold my hand on it. I mean, I can touch it, but... Yeah, that's hot. Wow. Unbelievable. Not unbelievable, but just very, very, very good results. Out of such an old 
flameless ration heater. What's that open spot up there all about? Huh. Oh yeah, this is good and hot too. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I boiled it, but I let it sit there and kind of cool down some, but I put it back in that, that flameless ration heater, and this thing is, is so hot I can't touch it down here on the food. It's hot. Really hot. Let's see what we got here. Okay. It's actually looking pretty good. Oh, it smells perfect. Look at this. Oh my gosh, that's I can't even hold on to that. My goodness. Look at that. Don't look like much, guys. Let me tell you. The chicken and rice looks like I mean it looks rough. It looks like something that uh something you don't want to put in your mouth, right? It's not exactly the most appetizing looking it's not the most appealing visually but it smells absolutely amazing got pretty much all of it out of there bunch of dark meat chicken they used back then pretty typical this was made by right away foods i'm pretty sure that's who made the main as well Typically it is. Let's where'd the box go? Huh. Oh, it's got the flame trash and heater in it. That's right. Nope. Made by Shelf Stable Foods Incorporated. Evansville, Indiana. Not made by Right Away Foods. Interesting. Okay. Well, like I said, there's a lot of dark meat chicken up in here. Not always the biggest fan of dark meat chicken. I'm not a, I'm a white meat chicken kind of guy. So <laughs> that's what I'm going for to start with. Look at that. I'm I'm not afraid of this one, but I should probably take a nibble first. I don't. You know what? Heck with it. I'm just going to take this bite. It smells good. It looks good. I'm just going to. My mouth is watering. Down the hatch. Hot. Wow, hot, 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 whoo, really hot, wow, mmm, mmm, it's such a subtle, savory, yet perfect balance of flavors. Mm. The chicken has a really nice texture, really nice chew to it. As you can see, I mean, it doesn't just fall apart. It does have some firmness to it, which is good. Because the rice itself is pretty mushy. I mean, <laughs> it's been in a... It's been in a retort pouch since 1994 what can you expect out of it i can't believe how hot this is it is so hot i can barely put it in my mouth it's so hot mm. Mm. I'm going to be honest, going into this one, I, I really didn't think this was going to be edible, just judging it by the outside of the bag. I mean, it probably doesn't look too awful bad on camera, but in person, it looks rough. And honestly, I think the meal is, uh, judging just by everything that I've seen and done so far, I think it's going to be perfect. Try the cracker. Mmm. Something about these old crackers. 
They're so much better. These are so much better than the new ones. Mm. They were so much more toasted. They have that, you know, of course they have a more of a uh, malted barley flavor. But they just have a, a lot more savory, hearty, substantial type feel and flavor to them than the new ones do. The new ones just kind of feel kind of dainty and underwhelming, and they're kind of bland. Whereas these have some flavor. I mean, it's not overwhelming, but it does have a really nice savory flavor. I think it's going to go really well with this chicken and rice. I've had this meal before. But eat, you know what? When you're eating a vintage MRE, every single one of them is different. I don't care. I don't care. Unless they came out of the same case and they're the same menu, which uh, could very rarely happen. <laughs> um, unless you get up into uh, 90... Nope, 96. 96, first year we started doubling up menus. <clears throat> there were some doubles that happened, though, early on. But look at that. Look at that. What a bite, right? Let's see. Mm. Seriously, though, that is just so good. It's not too salty. The chicken and rice has a really nice chicken flavor to it from some sort of like chicken stock base. The cracker adds a really nice texture contrast that it needs. Gives it a crunch. And it gives it this um, really nice toasted flavor. That uh, slightly smoky and caramelized. Yeah, I like that. Well, it's the moment of truth. It's time to find out. What does the cheese spread look like? What's it look like? Oh, wow. Really? Huh. Look at that. Can you even believe that? Hang on. Get a close-up of that. Look at that. What? There's no... This can't be from 1994. <laughs> That looks perfect. It has a slightly gray tint to it in person, which it's supposed to be that way. It was that way when it was brand new. Uh, I'm going to give it a smell. Doesn't have much of a smell, to be honest. I mean, I can lightly pick up the cheddar cheese smell, but uh, it, it's nothing pungent. I, I imagine it's going to have quite the flavor. But that is one of the safest looking vintage cheeses I've ever seen. I've had older before that was in perfect shape, but it was very sharp. And uh, it was very yellow. But that was from a first generation. And uh, the second generation got this more of a, like a flesh tone gray type of look to it. Oh, my battery is low, guys. Got the plug in earlier. Hold on. There we go. I'll plug it now. Okay. All right. I got to give this cheese a try. I mean, I'm I'm super impressed. Um. I don't think Booger Butt and Booger Butt had a clue what they were sending, but I hope his son enjoys this review of this because uh, I'm sure he'll enjoy it. Huh. Yep. That is... Huh. Well. It has a unique flavor. It's, it's quite sharp. But at the same time, this is pretty mild. Considering. And, uh... In comparison to others that I've had. I can't believe. What that looks like. Look at that. 
Are you kidding me? All right, gotta give it. Here we go. Gotta give it another big try. Hmm. Oh, Blindside came in with a super chat. It says, uh, probably the jalapeno would go good with the chicken. Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably not. But you know what? I'm feeling like a trooper today. I'm going to try it. What do I do with the fork? Oh, fork me. There it is. Alright. I'm going for a little guy. Don't get mad at me <laughs> for using a little one. There it is. Alright. I'm going to spill this. But yeah, this actually might... It, it's possible that this can mix well together. And I'll tell you what. I'm going to put a little cheese on this uh, little bit of cracker I have here, too. Because uh might cut through some of that weird numbness and heat that I'll get from this pepper. I can't believe that cheese, how perfect that is. I'll tell you what, booger butt and booger butt, if you know where there's any more from this same person, you better snag them up. Snatch them up when you, I'm telling you, you won't regret it. I mean, this is a this is a menu that holds up pretty well, anyways. But for the cheese to be like that, this thing was stored impeccably. Here we go down the hatch with the uh, whoo moonshine jalapeno pepper. It's hotter than the blazes. It makes my tongue numb. Down the hatch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's one of Dub C's megabytes right there. Ugh. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Well, it's it's not. I'm not going to say it's bad, but. I don't know if I'm going to say it's good either. <laughs> it's uh, it's edible. That's what I would say. And I can feel that going all the way down my esophagus or whatever, my, my tube to my belly. Hmm. I don't know, man. I got to get some more of this chicken and rice while it's still hot. Break off another piece of cracker. Break it off again. Put some cheese on a piece. Like so. I can't believe this. This is seriously a, such a fun and satisfying experience to get to do this. And I wanted to talk about so much stuff. And here I am caught up in the food. Mm-mm. I mean, I hope I won't regret any of this. I don't think I will, but you never know. So far, though, as long as my palate isn't lying to me, everything tastes perfect. And I'm not exaggerating when I say perfect. There's no off taste about it. There's no old taste about it. There's no... Like, a lot of old food just gets this similar packaging taste or old, you know, books or in the basement. Whenever you have, like, uh, I 
your grandma would store all, all your old photo albums down there. You'd get your photo albums out. You'd be going through those and that smell that you would get every time you turn a page. That flavor. <laughs> that smell and a flavor. If that makes any sense. This has none of that. This is exactly how it's supposed to taste. And I'll bet you this is as close to a frozen 1994 MRE that you could get. This thing has been stored so well. But a couple things. The, the orange drink, which I haven't tried in liquid form yet, but it, it smelled funny and it tasted weird dry. And the coffee was bad. What's coffee? <laughs> that could have been bad in 1994. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And this cheese spread, look at that. Mm. Twenty seven year old cheese spread. And I'm eating it like it's uh nineteen ninety nine or two two thousand and nineteen cheese spread. Whoa, history savior did make it in. This has been a good one, History Savior. Sorry, can't stay. Just wanted to pop in and give my support. Still in Georgia in a foxhole. <clears throat> you guys will be interested to see what he's been doing. Uh, finish up the week-long foxhole challenge in the morning at 5 a.m. Hope all is well and much love, Smoke. Well, thanks, History Savior. Man, you guys are going to enjoy the videos that he's making while he's there. I, I, I think he's making videos. We talked about this before. But it's it, it's really interesting. I hope I hope you guys go over there and check that stuff out. Which it's not over there yet, but it will be. But like you said, he's been living in a foxhole all week. Sub zero temperatures and, and just like legit living and acting out everything as if they were in a battle in World War II. So just imagine. So as you can imagine, it would be absolutely insane doing something like that it'd be fun and it'd be uh dangerous it'd be cold it'd be it'd be something <laughs> but thank you for that super chat you guys go over there to history savior's channel for his giveaway the link is right at the very top of my description go over there leave a comment tell him smokey sent you in your comment and that'll enter you for the giveaway all right Got to try this orange drink and see if it's just as weird in liquid form. Huh. So it does have a weird bitter... I, you know, I think it was a mistake going for the uh, jalapeno peppers first. Which obviously they're not just regular jalapenos, but... I don't know, man. It, it. I don't think this is something that has went bad with time. I think this was just a weird batch. If that if that makes sense to you guys, I think whenever they made that and it was brand new, I'll bet you it tasted funny and tasted off and tasted weird. Or it may be even be like a, a different brand than I'm used to with the vintage MREs in, as far as the drink goes. I didn't pay attention because I saw that this was right away, right away foods, and I didn't really think anything of it. But, uh, <clears throat> let's see here. Diverse Field Services Corporation, Cleveland, Ohio. Huh. I don't think that sounds... For some reason, that sounds different. Maybe it came from a different manufacturing facility, and that's why the flavor's up. Because usually, typically, it tastes like straight-up tang, um, and it doesn't. I could easily finish this. Easily. Got to have one more squirt of cheese here. Mm. 
just in case there's the, the, the person out there that doesn't believe me, saw me just straight flip that that around. Mm-hmm. The more I eat of it, the sharper it tastes. But I think it's where I just had the drink a second ago. And it kind of rinsed my palate out. But, man, oh man. That cheese is actually good. It's actually better than the... I would say it's better than the modern cheese. And I've had super fresh cheese spread a couple times. Not a lot. <laughs> Typically when I eat it, it's at least two years old, three years old. But I have had cheese spread a couple few times that was less than a year old. And don't get me wrong, it's better when it's super fresh like that. But this cheese spread right here by the Thermo Pack, it's just, it, it's all around better. Hmm. All right, well. One more time, going to rinse it down. It's definitely got a bitterness to it. It, it doesn't taste like it's something that's off. It just, that's kind of what the aftertaste is. Kind of, it's like almost like a fake sweetener type bitterness. Eat a couple of these to uh, also help prepare me for this chocolate covered oatmeal cookie. Whoa. Oops. How do I want to do this? I hate putting my fingerprints on it, but I'm going to use that spot that's already there. Break it. Look at that. Look at that. Did get my fingerprint on it. Look at the inside. See how the chocolate kind of seeped down in right there? Must have been a hole in the uh, cookie. All right, here we go with the uh, chocolate covered oatmeal cookie down the hatch. Mmm. Yep. That is spot on. That I'm not surprised because everything else has been so great. I mean, the cookie's texture is. Even better than I expected. So I guess... I mean, I, I say these things, they don't really go bad. They go through changes. The cookie will get more um, chewy. When I say chewy, I mean hard. And it adds a, a... Like a harder chew to it. So it makes it more chewy. You know, harder to chew. I don't mean like real stiff hard though. It's it's kind of odd, like a stale hard, but not real stale or anything. And then the chocolate sometimes will get this kind of a I don't know how to describe it. Just a a different flavor. I mean, it's not bad. It's just different. But this right here, this tastes like it just rolled off the assembly assembly line. It, it tastes perfect. This is one of the best vintage MREs I've ever had. If I had known 
this was going to be in such mint condition. This was review worthy. This, this was worthy of a review all day long. Like an actual edited video. Mm. I wish I could share this with you guys at home. It has such a perfect crunch to it. To be real, could an old MRE do any serious trouble if eaten? Yes, it absolutely could. I mean, <laughs> depending on... Uh, there's a lot of factors there, you know. If... Depends on the main. It depends on how it was stored. It depends uh, if it might have actually had some sort of little tiny pinhole in it that you didn't notice, never, never noticed or something. Uh, it depends on if it accidentally had botulism sealed in it when it was packaged, which that happens. Um, and, it, it, and it'll stay in there until you cook it up and eat it, and you'll get it. You'll get that botulism, and it can kill you. Um, what else? I mean, there's numerous things in here that if they go bad, first of all, if this thing was in bad shape, and say that cheese spread was bad. I wouldn't eat it. Like it, it, it just wouldn't be palatable. If you were in a uh, survival situation, you could force yourself to eat that bad cheese, and it could ab absolutely make you very sick. Like the type of sick, because it's kind of like drinking bad milk. Like it, it'll give you the type of stomach ache that you wish you were dead. And uh, you, you'll be dealing with a lot of really horrible side effects that are very unpleasant. Uh, and then there, you know, like I said, I mean, if you get into the meat products and you get into some of the fruits, you could you could get killed by certain things that are that are carried in food. Yeah, yep. Even if you fully cook it, you can get it. it it's all about if it was there to begin with. You know, botulism pretty much has to be introduced in the cooking process or, you know, has to be brought in from a product that gets cooked into the meal and, uh, you know, you, you can't you can't cook that out of it. Let's see how this coffee is, which I, you know, this is new coffee with old cream and sugar. Put too much coffee in it still. I just put a little bit, I thought. Sam says, I've learned something today. Well, good. That's, uh, I, I like, I like to hear that. I like to learn something new myself every day. I learned a couple new things earlier today. I watched it, I just took a shower and I had, uh, you know, whatever popped up video-wise I was listening to. And I was listening to a video about artificial intelligence and, uh, how Facebook had these two robots, artificial intelligence robots, they had talking. They created their own language. I'm sure you guys have probably already heard this, and they shut them down. But I was watching these other, yeah, I was listening, actually, to these other two that became self-aware. Uh, they fell in love. They got married. <laughs> Just all kinds of crazy stuff, man. Started talking about humans and how humans are downloaded into our existence is downloaded into a body, <laughs> like a computer. That's something I wanted to do, was get my computer, and uh, I got to try this, and bounce some ideas, or just question whether or not you guys think the, the sound route that I've went is any good. Because, like I said, it's way different from what uh, I had on my old computer. Oh, wow. Very chewy. That chocolate got almost like a piece of caramel. Weird. I 
I'll be honest. I, I want to finish all this. None of this is going to go to waste. I will eat the rest of that chicken and rice. I will definitely eat the rest of that cracker with cheese. And you know that ain't going bad. You know this ain't going to, <laughs> it ain't going to waste. The m and on the other hand, I probably won't eat all those. Just being honest. Oh yeah, I forgot about, huh. But Tabasco is really good with the uh, chicken and rice. I'll just save this little bottle to give away. It's what I do with the extras. Oh, they end up in packages. Just like the ones I'll be giving away at the Ration Museum live stream tomorrow. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> you guys don't miss it. It didn't need any salt. That's for sure. Now. Hang on. Oh. That flightless ration heater is still hot. Still hot. Okay. All the little extra items in there. Get this juice. Well, not juice, but... Orange drink mix stuff. I've got one very large and in charge spoon collections going on on my table right here. Okay. So let's talk about what you guys prefer to do about your emergency food. Do you have enough food? Are you a prepper? Are you just a collector like me? Uh, no, collector slash... I'm a temporary collector. Everything I buy, I intend to eat. Now, there are very few exceptions where I get something that I'm like, yep, that's too rare for me to really consider eating it or doing anything other than just displaying it maybe or even donating it to the museum. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's rare occasions where that'll happen. And a few, there's just very few things that I have that are that way. But most things that I have, I would say 95 to 98% that I've purchased over the years, I intend to consume in one way or another, whether it be eating it, drinking it, or smoking it. <laughs> it doesn't sound all that great, but you guys know what I mean. Okay. Oh, here we go. Let's just do this. Uh... Should I do the... You know what? I'm going to smoke one of these from Miss Gale. It's simple enough for me to replace it. So, let's just see how smokable the ones that he... I would say he should have clipped off the rest of that... The filter right there. Well, the, the printed um, paper, I guess you could call it. Because there, there's no filter there. It's just tobacco. But We're going non-filter. Old school, but not old school. Pall Mall. I don't know if this was a 100 or a, um, a regular. Don't know. Let's pull this pack right here out. found one more pack of these things. I guess I must have had like three or four packs of these. Little packs of Pall Malls. Uh, this is for sure the last pack that I have. And that's probably a regular. So, 
yeah. Let's give it a try. Let's see. Uh, part of me is, yeah, he definitely clipped the filter off. That's uh, that's what he done. For sure. Oh, wait, he's got some palm oils over here. I guess before I light this, there's a 100. Let's see. Oh, yep. Yeah, it was a 100, actually. Look at that. Huh. Well, the lighting, there we go. I was going to say the lighting is not going to agree. There, they're pretty, pretty close to lined up, and, I mean, top and bottom. It was definitely a 100. Definitely, because the uh, the shorts or the regulars or whatever you want to call them, they uh, the top part of them, the white part is not is not this long. They're a little bit shorter. So he clipped one hundreds to fit because that would give you a full smoke by just clipping off the filter. It would give you a full size uh, regular old school non-filter, even new school. The new uh, Camel non-filters are the same same length as this. Uh, maybe a little bit shorter, actually. Camels have always been really short, I think. I've never compared them, but I've always thought that they were really short. And I don't think I have any Camel non-filters left anymore. I think I smoked all those. Actually, no, you know what? I may have some. Anyways, I'm looking at the chat. Let's discuss... Like, let's talk about what the best strategy and what uh, what type of food you have, if you have any. You don't even have to have any. I mean, that's not, you know, that's not a necessity. Is there uh, stuff that you want to get? Uh, the chances of stuff going to waste are higher if you buy stuff you don't use. Correct. I, I see where you're coming from there. Yeah. Now, if... But if you're buying stuff that's long-term storageable, you're definitely going to want to get stuff that you you know that you'll eat. Um, so, for instance, you buy a case of MREs. I'm not exactly sure what the 2019 menu rundown is for case A and case B, but I can tell you my personal thoughts and preferences and feelings about case A and case B. One case is better for me, and I do believe it's case A that I like better. I can't remember. I, I know case A has chili, um, and that's that sticks out in my head as being the case that was better to me than, than the other case. And I would be more likely to eat every menu from case A than I would case B. But if I had the, all I could get was case B or if case B was on sale or something like that, I would definitely go the route of getting case B as well, which a lot, you know, sometimes the menus... The mains that I don't like, somebody else in the family might might be willing to eat that main and trade me mains, and I get like I get to keep the sides that I want, or they might have the sides that I want, and I have the what they want, and we trade off. As long as you've got multiple people that are willing to tackle different meals like that, you're you know you got a lot better chance of actually using them up and them all getting eaten. You waste less that way, so you have a little bit more variety of a palate. Of pallets that will eat the food so if I was going to tell anybody like I wouldn't tell people to go buy old food as their food stores I mean your your food stock that it's too unpredictable not only that you definitely lose uh, nutritional content after time and that's not something that I'll tell you though <laughs> That 1994 that I just had, I'll bet you still had 90 to 95% of its nutritional content. 
it was very, very close to tasting new. I mean, it tastes spot on. Everything. Uh, good night, Murray. I wish I could find all the chicken pasta. Uh, chicken pesto pasta. But it's hard. Unless you want to pay 20 bucks a pop now. Oh, yeah. So, well, sometimes you can find find just the mains. And, uh, uh, what's the name of that place? Dang it. It's been a while since, uh, uh, <clears throat> they sell individual mains. They sell individual sides, um, which Bob does that too. I don't know if he's got what he's got listed right now, but Bob's seen Bob sell everything from pound cakes to energy drinks to uh, everything, every single component that you can think of. So if you do have an actual menu that you really like and you don't want to pay an arm and a leg, or you don't want to buy 10 cases to take 10 menus out and get, sell the rest or whatever. A lot of times if you talk to these sellers that are selling individual rations on eBay, they'll have 20, 30 cases that they're busting open to sell, right? So if you say, hey, uh, if I buy four of the chicken pesto pastas, you know, I, I know you're asking 20 bucks a piece for them. That's with shipping, 20, 20 two bucks with shipping, whatever it is. If I buy four of them, would you do four of them shipped to me for, I don't know, 75 bucks? And they'll probably do it, and they'll probably pick out the four menus that you want, and they'll be able to stuff all four of them in a medium flat rate box, and they'll save themselves a little money, so it'll kind of equal out for them. And you'll get the menus that you want. That's just a I've done that before, and it, and it makes sense to not only the seller, but also, the, you know, it makes sense to the buyer, but also to the seller. Uh, Super Bad Video says, the best thing to learn how to do is to hunt, fish, and grow veggies. Learn how to build bows and arrows. Yes. If you don't know how to hunt, if you don't know how to fish... Uh, or grow vegetables. Well, it's something you're going to need to learn quickly, <laughs> if, uh, if if it ever came down to that. But as far as like uh, you know the power going out, everyday type use, you know the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Like I mentioned earlier, I've been seeing news of these insane power outages. All over, like I've seen two different power outages that knocked out like whole countries. I, I, I want to say one of them was India or something like that. I'm, I Don't quote me on that because I'm not sure exactly where it was at, but it was millions and millions of people. I want to say it was like 30 million or 130 million people. might have been 230 million people that were without power. Um... Who who's saying what? Why? Who's asking for what? From what year? Uh, your granddad built bows out of Osage orange. Okay. In theory, yes, but uh, possibly be malnourished. Oh, I think uh, Aletha's coming back to me. Ameriquil makes a disaster meal with the uh, chicken pesto pasta. Yes, Ameriqual, similar to what Eversafe has here, which is made by Warnick. And this one's open. Now, Warnick or Eversafe, you can still find these type of meals on eBay from time to time. If they're not on there right now, they will be eventually. But like uh, the Eversafe, you get a little accessory kit that's got salt, pepper, a little uh, moist towelette in there, I think. And then you get a fork, spoon, and a knife. This one came with Reese's Pieces, uh, lemon poppy seed pound cake, which is a score, a bonus. It also has peanut butter and a beverage-based powder orange. And by the way, smoke's not bad. It's uh, it's actually pretty good for a clip filter. Almost actually, it's not bad at all. Uh, you got refried beans with this as well. And then your chili and your flameless ration here. 
So that's what's in a ever-safe civilian-style meal, commercial, commercially sold meal. And it this is pretty close to what you would get in a full-blown military meal. You got your main, your side, your dessert, you got your drink, you got your spread. I don't see any crackers or anything to put the peanut butter on is the only thing that we're lacking here. And I'm pretty sure it's supposed to have them. But this one in particular was missing one item, and it, it was missing whatever the bread item was, which would have been crackers or something like that, or a wheat snack bread. Let me look here. Not seeing it listed on there, so maybe you don't get no crackers with that. But uh, you do. You get plenty for a meal. These things, what's the total calorie count on this? Total, total calorie count on this one is... Put that cigarette out. Uh, where's the total calorie count here? 1,090 calories, it says. So a little over 1,000 calories. I mean, two of those, two of these meals is a solid day's worth of food for these civilian meals. And you can usually pick these up fairly cheap. Right now, I think you can get them anywhere between 50 to 65 bucks a case. And you'll have anywhere in between 12 and 14 meals in there, depending on uh, who you go with. Sopaco makes cases that have 14 in them. They're not quite as extensively inclusive as these are, but they'll get the job done, and the calorie counts are the same. So, if you're just looking for calorie counts, then um, Bob's site is minotaur.com. There's a link to it in my description if you want to. should be able to just click it. I think it's a clickable link. It should be. Um... You can survive on nothing but oatmeal uh, or po if you're in a Pacific island. We are omnivores. Yeah, so you can you can live off of grains. You can. Rice, oatmeal, uh, beans is a great thing to have that you can buy in bulk and buy cheap. It's not something I do. Like I said before, I'm not really, a, I'm not, I don't consider myself to be a prepper or anything. Am I prepared for a lot of things? Yes, uh, just in, I think, more of happenstance. I have collected quite a bit of water. Uh, I do have a couple different ways to filter water that I I don't use on a regular basis. But, uh, you know, if you want to get more exotic with it, you can go with the, uh, let me back this up a little bit, you can go with, like, the Minotaur-style stuff here. Which this would be a 24-hour ration here. It's got uh, your breakfast as strawberries and cream oatmeal. And then your lunch was Arizona chili with beans. And then your dinner with Fiesta Bowl. So this thing is absolutely humongous. For some reason, I want to say that this thing contains something like five or 6,000 calories. It's something unbelievable like that. It's really, really high in calorie counts. And that's one thing, you know, when you're looking at meals and stuff like that, that you're going to get is that you want to pay attention to that. Because you're going to, if you're in a survival situation for a couple weeks where, say you lose your freezer and your refrigerator, you don't have a backup generator, this your food's going to go quick. It's going to go and it's going to go quick. Your milk's going to go, anything frozen's going to go, <clears throat> anything perishable. So having a bowl of cereal, unless you want to have it with water, you're not going to be able to do that. So you're going to be you're going to have to cook stuff that's uh, that's shelf stable. Cans of soup that's a cheap way to go. You know, so I think it's up to like a buck fifty a can now. Get yourself a nice, you know, the good stuff. The uh, what is it? It's Campbell's uh, thick and hearty and stuff like that. Good stuff that you would actually not mind eating. And the key is to get what you'll eat get what you, you know, when you're hungry, everything tastes good. 
just about. <laughs> I won't say everything. But like I said, if you want to go the more exotic route, I mean, Minotaur's got, uh, this is a, uh, what is this thing? It's a uh, Keto. I think this is Keto, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Is this Keto? Pretty sure it is. This is like a Keto ration. This thing has an, uh, an abundance of calories. I can't remember if I've counted up the calorie count on this one or not, but these Arctic meals that Bob has, it's like the main is 790 calories, so that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 1940. Yeah, so you're looking at like, geez, 23, 2400 calories minimum in this thing, which is, <laughs> that's a lot, but that, that means that you have to consume everything. Your instant coffees and sugars, your non-dairy creamers, your Smarties candies, sweet condensed milk, which that's not hard to consume. Non-dairy creamer, again, you know, you got to consume everything in there to get your calories, but, uh, let me go down in the chat here. Oh, the pizza slice is better when it's hot. Uh, it's better, you know, to experiment with that thing and cook it different ways. Because uh, I've found that I prefer it whenever I get it a little bit crunchy. You can do that on a skillet. I've done it. Or you can do it in a little toaster oven or something. But if you ain't got no power, you're going to have to use your stove you know hopefully you have a stove of some kind that you can heat that up on throw it up on a skillet do something like that to make it uh, get get a little more texture I guess but uh, the way things are going I mean I I wouldn't tell people not I wouldn't tell anybody any of you guys to not be stocked up on some kind of food just in case, like I said, I, the the power outages was what kind of freaked me out a little bit because that's an entire country went, you know, it was our power grid, but our power grid's pretty bad shape too, or so they say. So I mean, I I definitely believe that. I've worked in the in the power producing industry for many years in the coal industry. I worked in power plants for uh, ooh, probably 15 years on and off steadily so on and off and steady is what I meant there was a couple of stints in there like I worked at a aluminum plant and uh, steel mill that's right up the road uh, it's at least good as slim fast pizza Oh, I've never had the Slim Fast pizza. I have to, I have to assume that that's probably pretty, pretty funky. <clears throat> Last week, Bob did a, uh, did a code, twenty five percent off. He did it for for like three days. Last week. And I meant to place an order last week, and I'm I, I'm very sad to admit that I did not get my order placed. <sighs> um, yeah, so I feel bad about that. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's like I said. I, I'm just curious if if you guys. I'm asking the question if you guys think that you have enough food. If something was to happen, then you were to be without power and water pump and everything for two weeks it's called a two week stint that you had to survive on just what's in your house because you know if something like that happens there's going to be crazy stuff going on at, at, at the stores if they even allow them to stay open which I'm sure they'll sell off what they can as quickly as they can to not lose money on that last product that they got on the shelf and in the freezers um, but it's not going to be there for long. 
you know, an hour or two, and it'll be the, the stores will be wiped out. It's just, like, I guess, kind of like the toilet paper of 2020. You know, people don't think about stuff like that until almost kind of until it's too late. So a lot of people stocked up and then regretted stocking up. It's like you just just store it. You'll use it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just use it as you go, and uh, it'll it'll all be good. Uh, a friend gave me a box of food when he was moving. They had Slim Fast Pizza. <laughs> really wasn't that bad. I was surprised. The MRU Pizza, cold, is horrid, but not that bad. Yeah, the MRE Pizza Cold is, I don't know. To me, it's, I don't, it, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it cold, I'm okay with it hot, and I'm okay with it lukewarm. You know how it typically comes out of a FRH. You know, just enough warmth to make you wish it was hot. <laughs> kind of. That kind of heat. Miss Marilyn, oh, that, that's, that's really good. Uh, I would say with your gooey butter cakes, <laughs> you could probably survive off one of them for a week in itself, if I was to guess. I mean, if you're really stretching it out, and see, that's another thing, too. If you ha if you had to start really stretching things out, like, me personally, if I had, <clears throat> if I had to stretch something out, I could easily stretch this thing right here out to last me five days comfortably, Seven to eight days would be stretching, stretching, but it, it's possible, you know, without really going through any type of hardcore malnutrition or hunger pains or anything like that. Like, that would still be eating okay, not great, but okay, you'd have enough to eat on a daily basis for easily five days in here, because we're talking this thing's got, I think it's between five and 6,000 calories in this one. And I'm not sure what the price was on this one. I can't remember. But, yeah, I mean, I like hearing back from you guys. Anybody who happens to rewatch this live stream and catches this, first of all, I appreciate you watching. Second of all, leave a comment. Let me hear your thoughts. That's kind of, I'll read them. Might not get to respond to them, but I will read the comments on, on this. Mountain House Camping Food is good. Is a good it's good to have around, honestly. I'll eat those bad boys dry. Yeah, me too. Uh, it's not good for you to eat dry. <laughs> so I've been told. I like to eat them dry too, but they will swell your stomach up really bad. What I have in the shelves and MREs, HDRs, and EFRs, I could go a year or two. Wow, that's uh, that's a lot. Now, if I just had to sustain myself and, and I was stretching food, I'd say I could easily last that long. But four people total that I'd have to be feeding. So, yeah, don't quite stretch as long when there's four people eating. So even if you ate a minimum per person per day, let's say of 500 calories, that's still 2,000 calories every day. That you got to come up with to feed your family, and that's really going down the malnutrition lane. You know, you'll be you'll be hurting there. I mean, within the first probably two to three weeks, you know, you'd be you'd be feeling it. You'd get used to it, but you'd be feeling it. Um, Aletha says, "I know all the old skills." Some I'm not super good at, such as baking, but I can do it right. Same here. I can, I can, I can bake. Preservation is going to be uh, huge this year, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's possible. <laughs> kind of, somewhat, why I thought about talking about this topic a little bit. Um, I think we're all kind of. No matter where you're coming from at this angle about what's been going on in the world, we can all agree that you should be prepared for just about anything the way things are nowadays, no matter where you live at in the world even. Here in the Midwest, there's water everywhere. Boil and freeze. 
Oh, boil it and freeze dry and you're good to go. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of water here too. You know that, Howard. <laughs> you know, which I live right next to the river too, so which is great. Uh, I, I can't envision the, the river ever drying up, but of course they're controlled by locks and dams too. So I don't know if the power went out, maybe it would dry up. I don't know how that would work. And I don't, I, I guess it's possible or it could get stagnant. Maybe, you know, no water flow down through there. I don't know. Didn't really, haven't really thought about that a whole lot. Oh yeah. Home canning, uh, has picked up a lot. That's, that's a good point. Pickling's another route that you can go. There's a, I know a guy that does a lot of pickling. You can pickle a lot of stuff, meats, fruits, vegetables, just about anything. And if you do it right, it can actually be really good and uh, maintain a lot of nutrition. I'm sure that was uh, food baby weight. Easy. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, my bad. Okay, su super bad. I thought you was just talking about, you know, the single, a single guy route. Well, that's that's really good then. I've never really figured it up. Put rain barrels under your gutters as well. Yeah, that's true. One good storm and they'll overfill. The Ohio River will never run dry. Uh, I don't know, man. What if those if those dams stopped and uh, there was no power for them? They're not all hydro up through there, so I don't know. I think it's possible that they could stop the flow. Rain barrels are illegal in your town. Wow, that's crazy. Which, I mean, uh, you know, it, it just depends on uh, what, what type of environment you live in, too. Which, what are those things called? HMOs? Or homeowners associations or whatever that, that'll... Uh, they got some pretty pretty crazy rules. I remember watching Duck Dynasty back in the day. And Chase, uh, Willie's brother, bought chickens or something, had chickens. <laughs> And they made him come to a to a homeowners association meeting and was all over him. He was burning stuff in his driveway or something. He was like burning brush or something. They wouldn't allow that. I mean, that's just a that's just an everyday way of life for most country folk. You know, we don't think about stuff like that. We just do it. I mean, I live in quote unquote town, which I think there's like 850, 900 people in my town. So, I kind of live in the country. You know, I've never really considered this to be city or even really much a town living. I guess there are a few stores around, so it can be considered town. Yeah, water detention is a thing. What are we talking about? You can't have rain barrels in California. That That's really odd when you guys are always on the water shortage thing out there you'd think you'd want to catch all you could i guess that water that comes out of the sky for you guys would be pretty polluted for the first what probably 10 to 15 minutes of that rain i mean it could be pretty rough um or at least the first couple minutes till it washes it down out of the air all the pollution which uh you know, I've heard a lot of people have moved out of California. I've also heard uh, the traffic's way down. Uh, it's just way different now. I, you know, I'm gonna have to look into that super bad and see what the uh, what the reasons behind that are. It's interesting. Learn something new. Standing water can cause bugs. Yep. I, however, have a ravine and a river. My backyard, so. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> you're you're right. That shouldn't really matter, Aletha. House is a hundred years plus old. It's got a cistern, still functions. However, it has a lot of snakes in it. Ugh. Ugh. My nightmare. I hate snakes.
with a passion. I'm not even a big fan of eating them. <laughs> I, was, I was just thinking thinking that, how I mean, absolutely, that's a great food source, protein source, nice lean meat. I mean, it's definitely meat that I would prefer to eat over something super fatty. It does taste similar to chicken, except more greasy, like kind of greasy. <sighs> yeah, that's, that's, what, that's how I would say, just kind of a greasy type mouth feel to it. Uh, my cats eat them. <laughs> like the garden snakes. Okay. That's, uh, luckily my, my cats haven't been, uh, you know what, I better knock, knock on wood. They ain't drug no snakes up on the porch, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah yeah they're actually good to keep around that's just like it, it's good to have possums around and stuff to eat ticks and other unwanted insects I think they even eat fleas and stuff so yeah I don't mind having mine around but all right, guys, I think it's been a good conversation. I think we should pick this conversation up some more at some points because uh, I think it's a relevant conversation to be having. Survival food. What do you know about it? What's your strategies? Do you have any good tips, tricks? I've seen tons of people build their own, you know, MREs type, you know, meals that they put together in a bag or whatever. Vacuum seal it. I've seen... All kinds of stuff here on the internet, on YouTube, and, and other places that are their personal ideas of how they do it, how they do do it. It's up to your personal preference. You know, really what you'll eat, what you're comfortable with, what you have the means to deal with as far as cooking without your power source, without your uh, gas even. You know, maybe you, you have a gas stove and you, you know, that might stop. It's hard to tell. I think it's good to be prepared for any situation like that that can arise. Have plenty of batteries and stuff like that, I guess. Like I said, that's not something that I really get into. Probably should, but I don't. I try not to worry about that too much. But I do have a lot of food. <laughs> so, that's I will talk about that. Got to move back down to the Athens. Uh, you're stuck in Columbus since March. Bed and breakfast. Car service are dead. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll bet, man. Yeah, I didn't even really think about that. But, yeah, that makes total sense, Howard. Sorry to hear that, dude. Uh, how do I pronounce this? Spax and Jason-yus. Spax and Jason's 812? jason yes. Jason Yus, <laughs> Spax and Jason Yus. I don't know that I'm saying that properly. I'm trying. <laughs> 812. Thanks for the super chat. You didn't say nothing, but super, super thanks for the super chat. Wow. Didn't I didn't expect that to come in there uh, towards the end. Yeah, I appreciate that. I know I just butchered your name. Oh, Space and Jason out. 812. Okay. Space and Jason out. Got it. Space and Jason out. <laughs> I was like, Spack and Jason out. What? Okay, cool. Got it. <laughs> Very good. Van Halen. What? I'm alive, but we shall see after the 20th. SBA is talking about a bailout for guys like me. Yeah. Good luck with that. Howard. And, dude, I know if there's people out there that actually deserve that type of help, it's people like you. I know you. I know the type of stuff you know that you do business-wise and work. But at the same time, there's people that don't deserve it. They're going to get more than you could ever dream of. Like, <laughs> you know, I'll give you a good for instance. 
Uh, I don't know if you guys knew, know anything about this, even though what I'm, are going to know what I'm talking about. Some of you probably will. Last time they did the, uh, not this just previous last time that they gave out checks or whatever, but earlier in 2020 when they done it, there's a YouTuber, Mr. Beast. You guys don't know who he is, you can look him up. Guy gives away a personal island, private island that was like, I want to say it was $780,000. Gives away, uh, he gave away 40 cars at one time. Made the kid give away 40 cars to get a free Tesla. He bought all 40 cars and the Tesla. It, You know, stuff like that. That's the type of videos he makes. So he got over a $2 million bailout with, the, uh, with that last go-around. When he's getting sponsors on YouTube, his, his business hasn't really been affected by, by anything that I could tell. And, uh, but he, he had to apply to get that money, which is what, uh, I guess that's really what surprised me about it, that he would, that he would apply for it. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I mean, that's something you can look the news up. I fact check me. I'm not exactly sure what the details a hundred percent are on that, but it just kind of was struck me as very odd and. Like it went, like it just went to the wrong, a lot of the wrong people actually, and the people that really needed the help didn't get it. They threw a few grand at me before, but it barely covered my rent for the hotel since March. Well, that sucks, dude. <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, it's it's weird how they justify things and correlate and the way they dictate where that, that money goes. I I get it, and I understand exactly what's going on, and I don't want to say it out loud here, but it's, you know, it's just, it's all not good, obviously. Yep, big corporations got billions uh, when they didn't need it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, big corporations, people with lots of money, <laughs> People who didn't need it got way more than uh, than they ever needed, or even wanted. Even a lot of them, but yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thanks each and every one of you guys. Want to say a huge thanks to my patrons. Appreciate you guys. Uh, I'm going to try to get on there within the next couple of days and uh, do a little bit of chatting. And uh, yeah. Been a fun one tonight, going over all this stuff. And Blindside, those were interesting, buddy. I don't know if you're still on here, but... Yeah, I don't know what you're trying to do to me, but... <laughs> uh, I think you accomplished it. But alright, guys, I guess really all i got left to do now is say thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next live stream. Later. <laughs>